In the Me Too era, it's no longer surprising when prominent and sometimes much admired figures are accused of sexual misconduct. But today in Israel, that variety of scandal touched a genuine legend here, former President and Prime Minister Shimon Peres. And his accuser is also a figure of note, Colette Avital, a former Labor member of Parliament and the ex-Israeli Consul General to New York. In an interview published in part today in the Haaretz Daily, Avital alleges that Perez on two occasions in the 1980s sexually assaulted her, once trying to push her onto a bed in a hotel room in Paris, another pinning her to a door and trying to kiss her, this during what was supposed to be work meetings. Well, for more, let's speak to Alison Kaplan Summer, a journalist from Haaretz, speaking to us from the town of Renana. Alison, thanks for joining us. Alison, it should be said at the outset, Shimon Peres's personal life was not in any way ever held up as a sort of model of, uh, of correctness. It was known he sort of led a separate life from his, his, his wife, Sonia, uh, but certainly nothing along these lines. So how seriously do you think this is gonna damage his legacy? Um, well, he was known as, quote unquote, a ladies man. And um, if you read the full interview with Coletta Vital, which is out in Hebrew and not yet in English, you understand that she's telling the entire narrative of her, of her career and, you know, putting this in um, as one of a series of places in which uh, she had difficulty because of her gender, you know, in the culture uh, of the time. Um, I think when the whole interview is out and you see that she had I guess an ambivalent relationship with Perez and that they were, you know, political allies and they and and he and his team helped her a lot at the time. Um, uh, so these sexual assaults or him forcing himself on her um, were part of the story, but not the entire story. And what's clear is she wanted to set the record straight because basically the entire Israeli political establishment, um, especially the journalists, for years, there were rumors that they had a long-standing affair, that they were in a, some kind of a serious long-term relationship. And the purpose of the interview appears to be to set the record straight that that was not the case and that, in fact, he um, uh, tried to force himself on her and both times uh, she rejected him. Uh, but I have to wonder, and it does raise a question, Allison, if people in Perez's circle who could have denied and uh, off the record to journalists that there was a relationship, let this, uh, these rumors stand as a way of shielding Perez uh, if these charges would ever, say, come to, or I say charges, but let's say allegations come to light. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they almost were public. Um, there's a very famous uh, story that she recounts uh, in the article that when Sarah Netanyahu was confronted about uh, her husband's infidelities in the, uh, in the 1990s, that she said on camera in a television interview, why are you only attacking Netanyahu? All men are like this. Why aren't you asking Shimon Peres what he does in New York? Why don't you ask him why he's always at Colera Vitals when he's there? And that was cut from the interview, but basically, you know, it was said in public and uh, and everybody uh, and everybody knew it. Um, it sounded like from her account that Paris didn't really mind the rumors of the two of them uh, uh, being, you know, together in a consensual affair and that maybe it even, you know, puffed up his image because she was a very attractive, intelligent woman. Um, and he even asked her once, according to her, um, uh, when she came to him complaining that people were saying that she was sleeping to the top, that there was something between them when there wasn't. He asked her, he's like, oh, does it bother you that that's what people are saying? So I think it did bother her very much. And it seems like that's why at the age of 81, she's decided to come out and tell her story. Right. You touch on a, a, a point there, Allison. We have to be honest that the Israelis of that generation were uh, definitely <laughs> pre Me Too. Uh, but if this was an accusation against a former general or another Moshe Dayan type who was known, it would be one thing. But Shimon Peres was a leader of what we would today would we would call the sort of progressive camp in Israel. I mean, the lead, the current leader of his successor as Labor Party leader is the noted feminist Marav Michaeli. So I think in that aspect, does that how does that maybe play maybe so do you think people in that camp are going to be loath to criticize him on this because they uh, approve of his other stands on for example the peace issue well first and foremost i think all eyes are going to turn to his close close uh, deputies like yossi balin like ori Savir, um uh to say something you know in reaction to what uh colette vital said because she named um, Yossi Balin personally a lot in this interview and said, you know, I told Yossi Balin that I don't want to be alone in a room with him. So they are going to be looked to to either confirm or deny uh, deny the accounts. 
And uh, yes, listen, you know, ever hear of Bill Clinton? Um, you know, similar circumstances in that uh, people were very loath to uh, to expose his uh, personal peccadilloes because they the feminists, the leftists, because they so identified with uh, with his agenda. And now there's, there will be blowback. People are going to say, should we still have these memorial ceremonies? You know, should we talk about him in vaunted terms? And um, uh, people already on the right are pointing out that um, uh, an Israeli war hero, uh, Rehavim Zevi, um, uh, who uh, who was assassinated, um, uh, has been essentially canceled in terms of uh, his posthumous honors when uh, when a lot of accusations of sexual assault came out against him. Right, and of course, we look, first of all, I should mention, like most media outlets, we reached out to Shimon Peres's associates. No one seems to be willing to react to this yet. Maybe waiting to see the dust have settled. Also, maybe waiting to see. As I said before, it was known, as you said, he had. Uh, uh, if you want to use the phrase "ladies' man," uh, you know, if whether more stuff will co will come out, and maybe that will determine to some degree how we see Shimon Peres. Um, no, absolutely, absolutely. But I think you need to read the. Full interview because she's challenged, you know, several times. Well, why did you continue these these incidents allegedly happened right in the early 1980s, and afterwards, you know, she continued to be a very uh, loyal to Perez and uh, and a political ally, and you know, uh, rose up from being a diplomat to being uh, a member of uh, a member of Knesset. And uh, and she even says, you know, when he was president, and people were saying that he was lonely in the president's mansion because at the time he was, you know officially estranged from his wife who stayed in their uh, apartment in Ramat Aviv and did not move to the president's mansion with him. Uh, she recounted offering to bring food over on Friday nights, right, to the president's mansion because she felt sorry for him. And the interviewer asked her, you know, uh, uh, you know, why, if he really did these things to you, uh, did you behave this way towards him? And she said, listen, I didn't hold a grudge. And she admitted that it was an, an ambivalent uh, uh, relationship. But um, uh, in which case, you know, her being honest in that way, I think, lends a little bit of uh, credibility maybe to uh, to the charges of uh, of uh, him for trying to force himself right. on her because she's not trying to take him as the devil. But though, of course, it uh, doesn't really in any way exonerate Shimon Peres for behavior. In some ways, maybe makes it look, uh, it puts it even in a more negative light, you might say. But well, we'll have to see what uh, how this develops in the coming days. Alison Kaplan, Summer of Hearts, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Colette.